Welcome back to the Super Tuesday Recap Mailbag. This is your host, Chris and Deep. I'm here. Oh, man, it's, uh, we were just talking about this. I'm, I'm, I'm taking a deep breath now, even just because of everything we got to cover today on the mailbag, but yo, know, life is just busy, man. <laughs> you boys are tired. <sighs> it's tired as shit, yo. I'm, it's, it's 8, 8, it's 8 p.m. on a, on a fucking, is it Wednesday? Yes, yeah, Wednesday. Shit. See, that's how bad it is. I don't even <laughs> right, know what day it is. Is it Wednesday? Yeah, I had to make sure I was like, well, it's technically my Thursday because I'm off on Friday. I'm taking, I had to take, you know, you got to take oh, those. Wow. You, you See, gotta, he's you dunking on me. The show hasn't started. I'm just saying, you got to, you got to, you got to, you got to take the me times, you know, like you got to. Early you gotta, dunking. Gotta, that's you that's know, important. Do that's it. nice to know. Yeah. But I know you're busy because like we had to reschedule the AD and Shield uh, review we were supposed to do last week. Because you ended up in, you were just like, yeah, I'm, Nick, I'm in Cleveland. I don't know how I got here. I'm just, I'm here. I'm doing Look, work. <laughs> I, I was gone for five nights for vacation, came back, and then realized I had to be in Cleveland in our corporate office on that Tuesday. Fun I had times. forgotten all about it. Fun times. Fun times. Fun times. Um, if you guys are listening to this, I'm hoping you guys also kind of voted for us. Not kind of, but you voted for us in the podcast awards. It's over now, so uh, it's in it's in the voters' hands. It's, I'm hoping you guys voted for us on the character corner. Um, so we'll let you guys know how that turns out. If we didn't make it, hey, we'll try better next year. Like again, we didn't. I this was a random thing on my part. I didn't really plan it. If we would have trust me, if, if I had planned it better, I would have made sure that we had actually had some character corner episodes coming out <laughs> during that time. <laughs> Yeah, San Diego, I'm on vacation, then we're both working our asses off. It's one of those things where it's like, oh, this is the plan, which is why I want to get people's feedback. If, you, if you're listening to this now, the micropod on Tim Drake is out. Let me know what you guys think. I like doing that. It's not hugely time intensive, and it's stuff I'm already reading. So let us know if you enjoyed that kind of format, and maybe we'll do some more updates or maybe even smaller show or a little bit bigger than that, but still maybe smaller character corners on individual X-Men or whatnot. Because you know, you know we got to do one on Wally West, right? Yes. Okay. Which is, yes, I do know that. I mean, I'm just, I, I just want to. Yes. And, and, yes, Chris. I'm aware. I'm just. I just want to. Oh, so someone caught up in their comics, huh? I'm just. I'm just. We gotta. I, I'm yo, and we'll get to that when we do the pull list stuff. But like, man, I was French. I was hoping to get all the way up to House of X, and I, I couldn't. I, I did the. I, I got up to where you were last what? time we did it. Dude, nigga, it's life. Life. You're gonna not let me talk about House of X in this episode. Uh, we can no, we can talk about it. I've seen some stuff already for it, so it's fine. We'll see how much I decide. I've got theories. We'll talk. We'll, we'll talk around it. I probably won't talk about the content of the issue, right? But just because like Hickman, it's so thick. Who has that kind of time? Right. I mean, come on, you know, we, come on, nigga. We, we got we we do have to go to work tomorrow. So I'm just saying. Oh, nigga, data pages are back too. By the way, which one? Data pages, like the alt oh. text pages, where Hickman just explains shit to you. Oh, 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 we all the way back then. Oh, and it ties directly back into this Fantastic Four run. I mean, of course it does. I mean, because why, Hickman's a psychopath. I mean, why wouldn't it? I mean, come on. Uh, Powers of Ten came out today for the first issue. We're not going to talk about that because I don't spoil uh, issues the day they come out. But nigga, we are in trouble. Great time to be alive, guys. Great time. To be Hickman's alive. a problem. When has Hitman not been a problem? All right. That's so anyway, awesome. uh, this is the mailbag episode. For those who don't know about the mailbag, <laughs> this is where you guys email us in mailbag at mtrnetwork.net. And Deepa and I read your emails. Uh, we talk about topics of the day. Nerd topics have come up, and um, yeah. So let's uh, let's hop into this. Is the mailbag for July? We got a lot of emails, so we'll get through these. So Lauren says, "Hi, Chris and Deepom. So the appearance of the X Men in Deadpool two has been bugging me ever since I saw the movie, and I finally realized why. You know how when TV shows like to drop a cameo book character, and they always have to drop a huge hint as to their name because it's not always obvious." who they are due to the way the costume look or the power translates to the small screens. This is especially true of Smallville back in the day. The X-Men cameo was like that, even though they were the movie actors and have been for, uh, have been for years. I wanted name tags. I wanted Beast to have a name tag. He just, he just doesn't look right. I mean, Beast has his baby fur in, in all those movies. So there's, yo, like, baby that's fur a, like, first of all, I haven't thought about Deadpool two since I saw it. Um, but it's, you're right. Yeah. That's one of those scenes that I hadn't really thought about. It just, what a strange little ad. And I realized they're all on the same lot filming in the same place. It was easy to do. It was very low cost, but it's a really good point. Well, like, even though we should know who these characters are, the only ones you know are Magneto, Xavier, and Mystique. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, the other thing, too, that, that bothered me, and you know, I'll get the, the, the emails I don't, I'll get the rest of the email in a minute. The thing that always bothered me about that, like, I always felt like Deadpool 2 is not 
bad, but it's also not the first Deadpool. And it's not it 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 almost tries too hard. And that's and mm-hmm. and that's one of the scenes that it tries too hard and it's like why put that and again it goes back to my larger issue with Fox. They would do things just to do them. When you put that scene into X in, in, into Deadpool, you break your universe cuz you're like but that X-Men team is the same X-Men team that happens in the 80s. So shouldn't why they be... Why is there? Who are these kids? Right. Lots so, of questions. Like, there's, there's all these things. So why is, why is that X-Men team there, but Colossus is old? Like, that's a different, and it's a different Colossus. Like, you then start see, asking... See, the way questions. I approach it, the way I approach it is I treated it like Looney Tunes. Like, it's just a background like, cameo. Like, didn't really... Yeah. Because that's the other thing. Is that it's also fucking Deadpool who talks to the camera exactly. and literally uses, like, thought balloons as bludgeoning devices in the comics. Like, if a character's going to break the fourth wall in a weird way... I will allow it for Deadpool. Exactly. It, like, it didn't bother me too much with it, but it's like, right. I also think that, again, it's, 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 it's typical of the way Fox handled their shit, where it's like, you, that was kind of dumb. And you guys, you know, you get, we'll excuse it because it's Deadpool, but you guys would have done this in Logan. You guys would have done this in other films because Correct. you're dumb. And so it just, <sighs> well, well, well I, I'll save my Joker rant for later, but um, oh, but we'll get there, kids. Don't worry. Uh, meanwhile, in the in- MCU, we knew Monica Rambeau instantly in the trailer from the shot of the back of the baby girl's head. Just from her hair, we knew it was her, and we were right. That's the difference. The X Men films feel like low budget early two thousand CW versions. They don't look like themselves. Meanwhile, the MCU nailed Howard the Duck, the flipping duck, for for two for a two second cameo. Like there was like it wasn't like two two second cameos. He he's in. They're, they're he's in three movies. He's in three movies. Like there, there's going to be a Howard the Duck movie. So uh, I'll be excited. That's for, the heat check, right? <laughs> for, for real. Uh, I'll be excited to recognize the X Men again once the MCU decides to restart the franchise. I don't know how they will do it, but I know they will. Uh, I know they will be good. Uh, best, Lauren in Pittsburgh. Thank you very much, Lauren. Thank you, Lauren. Um, I'm trying to see. Cause we have another email. I'll just go up from the list. The order I'm, you sent them. No, I'm, I'm going. I'm going in the order. But there was one another email that was kind of related to the X Men. We'll get to that one later. Uh, welcome back to the Rob Liefeld Pockets and Pouches email bag presented by the co-creator of Venom. You guys joke, but I keep getting emails about that Spawn 300 cover. So I'm just Todd McFarlane's not going away, and Rob Liefeld's not going away either. It's like yo, the, I, Todd. I get it. Rob Liefeld at this point, man. Look. <sighs> No, no, obstacles can stop you from vacations to lacking of fun. Uh, from vacations to lack of funding, the vision remains undefeated. Uh, now, well, this- before you say the next line, like Rob Lightfield's out here sharing like Stanley photos. I want this off my chest. That's some fucking dirty cloud chasing bullshit, and it sucks. And it makes me angry, and like. Every time he comments on a Stanley photo or likes one or shares it, it makes my blood fucking boil. I just had to get it off my chest. I'm sorry. Tell him why you're mad, man. Tell him why you're mad. I, I, I think I'm pretty sure I just did. Now, this next agent's uh, recap isn't called Listen to Me Now, Believe Me Later on I'll Be Stunned. Talk your shit, deep palm between that and Chris finally understanding the pain you. that you, we had to endure waiting for a season two of Young Justice and what a fuckboy Vandal Savage is. Must be hard being this right all the time. I can hear the triumph in your voice. Uh, when that fringe rewatch finally happens in 2024. That's a good date. I want to address this paragraph. That's a good date. First of all, fuck that date. 2024. Thank you for recognizing how often I'm right. That's a nice round number. 2024. (laughs) You're an asshole. It's important. I hate you so much. I think you're so mad that you said that. (laughs) It's important to acknowledge that I am on a hot streak here. Are you up on Young Justice, by the way? No, I, I need to. Uh, uh, I need. I need to catch up on that. Which, by the way, I just. I just want to let you guys know there is a correction here. Um, I don't understand your guys' pain because Young Justice season four, four has been announced. So, I'm actually good. <laughs> How dare you? Hey, and by the way, before I, I meant to say this earlier, let's not read the last paragraph of this uh, this post. Okay. Because unless you're reading trades, you don't know that. Unless you're, if you're behind, you don't know what's happening. Okay. 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 I got you. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't understand you guys' Young Justice pain because like I, I know I'm getting. I I know when the next season's coming out, so I'm so good. 
That's a trash opinion. You're a trash person for having it. I, I mean, I don't want you guys to understand that it's only going to get trashier from here. Um, but I do have to agree with Chris on Far From Home without going too far into spoilers. I'm with him on the end of the film. The way they kept focused so much on that second um, second cape, it can't be just an action or a loose end. I know it's almost taken for granted at this point, but Marvel just giving away the game away for free, dropping the best Spider-Man movie of all time. Part of the company really can't be undersold. And again, for what second cape? I don't know. I I, I think I think it was, might have been a misstep. I think I think this might be talking about. Um, I don't think that Quentin Beck is is completely one hundred percent dead. So we'll see. Okay. Um. But yeah, I mean, going back to Spider Man, I mean, the made Sony a billion. Light work. They made Sony a billion. I mean, I've never heard of another a studio making another studio a billion dollars and being like, cool. There you guys go. You and, then, know what? and then collecting another cool mo- billion behind Lion King. Yeah. You know, and then being like, hey, don't worry, guys. We'll still make a third one for you. We got you. We got you. We don't forget the little people. Uh, yeah, so we didn't read that last uh, paragraph from Armani, but thank you very much for the email. Uh, it says August mailbag question, but no, you were able to get in. Again, remember, we don't record these until... The last Wednesday of, unless we t- say otherwise in other shows, usually it's the last Wednesday of the month. So try not to get him in that Wednesday, but as long as you get him in, you know, no, a few days. I before. appreciate the fact that he was scared. Yeah, no, no, no. There was a couple of them like that. There were a couple of them like that who, who were actually scared they missed it. So thank you. You're being responsible. We appreciate it. Very much so. So, uh, anyway, Jonathan says, post Comic Con, I wanted to get your opinion on Mahershala Ali uh, being selected for Bl- the Blade reboot. Also, do you think was he not should have had an opportunity to, to hand the torch since he paved the way? Um, no, because he slept the shit out of it, uh, Holly Berry. So fuck Wesley Snipes. <laughs> fuck Wesley Snipes. It's fuck them kids, fuck them women, and fuck them taxes. Apparently, well, the only thing I'm upset about with Ali being cast is I still can't pronounce his first name. That's fair. You know, like there's some words you can't spell. Like I can't spell necessary, mm-hmm. like to save my life. Mm. I, my brain glitches when I try to say his name, so I just call him Ali. But yes, I am. I'm in for it. I think it's a great decision. I think the fact that he walked in there with two Oscars and said, "I want to be Blade," they were like, "Of course you can be Blade." I mean, that's and uh, I think that's something. I think that's something that, and me and you will appreciate this. But how far are we come in? How far are we come when a man who has won? Two Oscars. Go, I mean, everybody, every, when, when the news came out that he approached Marvel for that, everybody was like, yeah. You, and, and even Fike was like, yeah. I mean, he approaches, we give him what he wants. He asked for it. And they made it seem like, like Marvel was the lucky one there. And, and that's true. But I remember when, if you were a, considered a quote unquote serious actor, you would not be cast in a comic book film. Unless that was the end of your career and you're trying to but, hold Yeah, but well, Marvel has past changed that. Glenn Close, Rene Russo, Anthony Hopkins, Robert fucking Redford twice. Like, they have done shit here where I was very impressed. And this is that final. But the thing is, it doesn't start with Ali. Because you got to remember, Brie Larson, she got, she got a statue before cut to Marvel too. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. I'm not, and again, I'm not saying that Ali is like, Alone the here, but, year, but, you're but, but it's but kind of me, the, the final nail in that coffin. Well, to me, I think out of all the people you named, like, um, and not to take away any, trust me, not to take anything away from Robert Redford, you know, uh, Anthony Hopkins, Glenn Close, these are people that literally kind of are on kind of more the, the downturn of their career. I mean, they're they're getting older, so hey, okay, Brie Larson was still kind of not like a huge name. She won that Oscar. She's a great actress. We were all there. They kind of snapped her early. Marshall Ali's a little bit different. This is a man oh, that now I has agree. two Oscars and is now like everybody's talking about him. He is the hottest ticket. You put him in anything, people want him. This is people are knocking down his door to get to him. And his thing was, yeah, I want to be, I want to be Blade. I want, I want to this season of True Detective yet. No, I haven't, but I heard he's good on that too. Nigga, it's better than the first season. He might be like I walked out. I was like, okay, so he's our greatest living actor. One, and yo, you walk out knowing that Stephen Dorff can fucking act. I didn't know that, right? And and, and so and, and so to me, I'm like, this still like again, and, and, and it's not again, not to take it away. Any, please 
Do not hit me up and be like, you're taking away from his action. <laughs> I'm not saying that whatsoever. Oh, I am not. Disclaimers. I'm all of disclaimers. I'm not saying that whatsoever, <laughs> but I'm saying it, it, it shows you another level right. of them building up. Because again, same thing with uh, Lapita, right? Disney got Lapita after she uh, got her out Oscar. Basically held on to her, started putting her in every fucking Disney movie they can get until they were ready to put her into Black Panther. Like, so we've seen this happen where they kind of taken somebody off the board. But this, is, this, this still feels a little bit different. Like, this is a man who they didn't seek out to get. He came to them when he has, he holds all the fucking cards. Like, Mahershala Ali holds all the fucking cards. He could do whatever the fuck he want. And his thing was, I want to be Blade. Let me go call up Marvel Studios. You know, and to me, that is, that's what's different. And, and, and that's something that it's just having seen that, that time when I remember when, when, when George Clooney had to apologize for being in Batman and Robin. He, he apologized for the movie, not for being in it. Not well, for, no, not you, you get what I'm saying. You, you get what yeah. I'm saying. But like, like, yeah, it was bad. And like. You know, it kind of ruined Uma Thurman's career a little bit there. Where, yes, like it ruined it. Ru- like it was you it didn't get you swapping. Yeah, like like I remember that. I remember when you didn't do these kind of films, and it was like, oh, you're 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 doing that, you know. And so to see the fact that we've gotten to this point where now it's like you, they're now. This is one of those things where they're you know. People are like, oh, well, you know, these Marvel movies are never going to win Oscars. They're never going to do that. And they're basically going, all right, cool. We'll see what happens. When we start getting all of the actors who are acting all of the time and all over the fucking place, we'll see how much longer you can keep ignoring us because we're going to keep putting these people that are the hottest tickets in, 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 in the game. And, and, it, and it, it amazes me because you, they'll pull in directors you've never heard of, right? <clears throat> And we'll get into the phase four stuff when we talk about some of these directors that they, they bring in that a lot of people have not heard of. You know, um, who's the, uh, the director for um, uh, 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 Spider-Man? Isn't that John Watts, I believe? Yeah. 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 He, um, he didn't really direct anything before. Like, you didn't hear that name before, right? Um, but then when it comes to the acting talent they put in those films and they give those, 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 those directors a chance to. So it's not even that like you're a director who... Uh, they're taking a chance on they're not like any other studio the way about that would be we're going to give you this film we're going to give you a smaller budget we're going to give you a no-name cast and if you if you break big great well then carry on from yeah. there but you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta earn your weight they're, marvel studios is not doing that they're like all right cool we're getting you, you i know you had you have one film under your belt that's cool we're going to surround you with all the people you need. We're going to give you the best fucking talent the money can fucking buy. We're going to give you the money you need. Because again, remember, with Guardians of the Galaxy, they went over budget. And they didn't, in order to kind of protect James Gunn there, that shit didn't come out until well after the movie came out. The movie went well like, after. Yeah, well after the movie came out. It's like, that movie went way over budget. Same thing happened with uh, Black Panther. It's like, because they know that if that shit comes out, all of a sudden, director now, oh, you went over budget. Oh, what about this? What about making your... Th- didn't worry about any of that shit. They let them go out there, focus on the idea. Go tell your of, story. Go tell your story. And then <clears throat> they have Kevin Feige there <clears throat> to basically answer any of the questions. So when it comes time to people asking about these movies, the director doesn't have to go out there and answer these questions and send these interviews to do that. No, Kevin Feige's doing it. So you you now create this environment. And, and, I, and I love bringing this up because there was a while there where people were saying how difficult it was to work with Marvel. I never wanted to work with Marvel. They're going to doing that. And what you would find is all the directors were saying that were well-seasoned directors that went about it a certain way. They were uh, uh, used to a certain level of control, which I understand not wanting to do that, but they overlooked the idea of, if you are kind of been always doing small-budget films, Marvel gives you a playground to kind of do whatever you want and then springboard off into doing whatever. You know? Right. And I, I think that it's just amazing to see that, that they might go out and get a no, uh, you know, quote-unquote no-name director, I hate using that term, but they're going to give them these big name actors to sit there and put in the film and give them a playground to play with. And honestly, still unheard of. Still unheard of with that kind, seeing that kind of stuff. So it's great. Great. Um, let me finish this email. Um, oh, we also, we joked to the nerd off that uh, when you get your second Oscar, the cell phone that dials real quick to Kevin Feige is in the bottom. What now? 
the the that, that we were all like, how do you even call Kevin Feige? The second Oscar, he was like, he talked to his agent, I want to be in Blade. He says, open the bottom of the Oscar. What? He <laughs> unscrews it, a cell phone, direct line to Kevin Feige. Yeah, of course. I mean, just it's the only way it makes make sense. Just I I don't understand. You get you get your second Oscar, and then you're I. That's I mean again, it, it should put everybody else on notice. It really should. Um, so I'm a grown ass man. I've read the boys, heard y'all talk about it, and I decided to watch the first episode. Why midway through it had I explained to my wife what the fuck am I watching? I'm not gonna sign this email to remain nameless, PS, but but we did see your we did see your name and the uh, I wish I had read You that opened first. I didn't say it, I you said it. it. So so who's doing the review of the series? So we do have a review. i I wrote a review of the entire series and I I did we did do a spoiler review. I'm telling you guys right now. So, and I know Deep Punk, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead and say what you gotta say. We're two episodes in. And for those of you who are about to lie to our listeners and say it's not as bad as the book, we watched the first two episodes and I was trying to explain how the book is worse and I struggled. Mm. There's things, obviously, they take things further in the book, but... Did you read the interview where they said the one scene they had to cut for the entire series? No. They filmed it too. They have it. They just Didn't. Amazon said absolutely not. <laughs> In the second episode, before he goes, uh, before one of the bigger characters is look for a kidnapped other character, he flies over the city masturbating. Oh, that okay. Uh, look, uh, and I'm- Amazon said absolutely not, which means someone in that fucking company has a spy. Because I'll say that there's no reason the show should exist. I, I'm not. Mm. I am in episode two. I, I'm going to watch it. Chris, sell, say your piece. Make your sell. I'm telling you right now. It having is, to explain to someone that, yes, I read something that's demonstrably worse than this. Well, that's my, that's my a point. a tough admission. Well, that's my it's point. a tough admission. Well, no, I get that. But I'm just saying, like, it's nowhere near as bad as a comic. It really isn't. Like. They, they, they okay. captured, they, it really, come on, come on. That, listen, no, we all, we all know gonna, the, we, this, no, the this starlight Chris scene, alone the, the starlight scene, are you telling me the starlight scene is worse? So you're going to hit me with the, it could have been worse. You know what he said that to me sometimes? Racists. It could be worse, which always sounds like a threat, not anything no, else. No, but it could be I, worse we'll, we'll is have not a, a defense, we'll, Chris. We'll have this, we'll have this, you're only two episodes in. We'll have this conversation. Two enough. We'll have we'll have this conversation. I I I and I and I think I think more people agree. But you see what I'm saying? Not really. (laughs) Okay. Not really. Okay. But no, because like honestly, and I'll I'll say this again about the boys. I think the reason why my stance is like I have no problem admitting that I watched the the TV show and, and talking about it is because the comic really does treat as women female characters like trash. Oh yes, oh, and, 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 we're getting and, to the larger issues of the boys because there's only a, so many hours in the day, Chris. No, no, you're right, right. I mean, it, but it does. But when you finish this series, like the female characters are not just min- like a minuscule better; they are wholly full form characters better. Like, and that's my point. Like, my biggest, my biggest problem. Yes, there's always going to be shock value, but then again, you got to talk about. I read Saga, so I've seen a dragon masturbating on a comic book page. So it's like, I, I can't really, I, I'm not going to really, and people have been calling for a I Saga. I think it's weird that Saga used that as their, uh, as their ad for everything. I mean, I just, just yo, you know, Saga, it's like Saga, <laughs> sa- Saga, you know, people keep demanding they want a Saga TV show. I'm like, if we're talking about the boy, like Saga gets kind of like, there, I think there literally is a panel where there's a dragon, one master, and there's one where he's sucking his own penis. So it's like, Guys, like let's let's slow down. We talk about crazy, you know, comics that end up being. Seth Rogen admitted he can't believe they let him make this. Well, here's the thing: I be- and I fully stand by this. Seth Rogen's become the problematic property whisperer. He has taken problematic properties and somehow been able to I'll transform them, transform them on screen in ways that make them better. In that, like, I'm not going to sit there and say there aren't like shocking moments in the boys that they they shock you. They're, Absolutely. That's so oh. brave of you to not lie no, 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 to the no, 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 no. But I'm not. I, I was never trying to say that. And like any show, like it's like Preacher. Preacher still has some shocking fucking moments on on AMC, yes. right? But at the same time, to me, the the biggest problem I always have with the reason why I was always against like, you guys are really going to make the boys a TV show. Like they literally have a, a character called the female. 
Okay? Like, it's that kind of thing. Like, Starlight's character in the comic is literally just there to drag a female character through the mud. Like, is as close as... Okay. No, that. she is, though. Like, even Garth Ennis even admitted himself. Like, he admits up front, he's like, yeah, we kind of put her in a relationship with Huey because of the last minute, but I hadn't... I kind of felt bad about what I had been doing to her, so I kind of threw her in there. <coughs> so, like... But when you see what they do with these female characters, all their female characters, right. it's, it's, it's just... It's, it, it goes from... Okay, that's shocking. Uh, it goes from... That's very cringy and... You know, very like fanboyish, problematic yeah, type but, shit. Okay, I see what you're saying about problematic, but the boys in and of itself is. I'm not here. I'm not. I'm not. The whole thing is so gross and like over the top that to break down the the specific gender dynamics feels like reductive. Well, I, again, let's have this conversation when you finish. And I think when we when you okay. finished when you finish all the eight episodes, I think it'll become more clear what I'm saying. Like, they, they make a clear... There gets a point here where they're hitting the major points of the comics, but they make a clear diverge... They, they diverge paths from the comics and what they do because they understood... Again, they understand the problematic nature of the comic. <clears throat> they understand they're going to be shocking. They're going val- to be shock value in there. They keep those elements in there, but sometimes they change their targets. They change what happens. I, I- I see what you're saying. Also, just for me, like I know they've already changed some characters to females who are males in the comic. I get all that. I'm just not saying, even, not even that. that. Yeah. We'll see. When we go ahead. No, no. Like I said, I, I'll be interested to have the conversation when you finish it. Okay, but I'm just saying when we when we say it's more tolerable shock art because it's more gender equitable. Like, well, well is there value in just being shocking for shocking sake? And well, like, well, I don't. See, and, I, and, I have and, problems and that, with social. I have problems with. What I've seen so far, and that the same level of cynicism is being approached. And people are like, this is a gritty look at superheroes. I'm like, the world is gritty. That's not the point of superheroes. I think that's my bigger issue with it. Well, that, yeah, I can get that. And but but here's my thing. There I'll is no like go ahead. There's no aspect. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I guess I'm older now. I think I'm reading it like 19 and 20. Mm-hmm. Is very different than reading it at 34. No, absolutely. And and that's what I'll say. And this is where I'll go with this is. And I think you, you don't really get it when you're only two episodes in. I think the show becomes more aware. Like, the things that you're, we're saying are shocking for shocking value that definitely happen in the comics. When you start seeing some of the things they start doing and the, how they, they start addressing them, they're not just... The show is more self-aware, I feel like, than the comic was. Sometimes I feel like the comic did things just to be shocking. Here, they're shocking things, but they're shocking, and, and everybody's like, no, that actually is kind of fucked up. Like... They they give a little bit more. They give a lot more depth to a lot of the characters. So things are happening to them, and you know you feel some other kind of way about it, other than just oh well, yeah, that was shocking see, to be for shocking. me. It's just like I didn't like the source material that much, and so Seth telling me that this is the source material, but better written. You know what I'm saying? I th- I, I when I say better written, I mean actually having a purpose. Like I I feel like I feel like the the boys comic was written as a product of his time, which is you do shock value. You have some kind of attempt at a message that doesn't really land, right. but it really is more about shock value. I don't think the show is that way. I think uh, there's actually one episode. I want to find who the director is. Cause I watched it and was like, they clearly had a woman direct this episode. And I'm like, and you needed to have a woman direct this episode because the way the topics that are being handled here, you needed to have a woman director. And I think that's where the show does better than the comic because in the comic you literally have just one man writing a comic and again you have editors and things like that but it's all coming from a male perspective when you have a sh- when you have this show they were clearly getting the input of women and changing things around like i'll give you a perfect example there are the way they depict rape um when you have a rape of a female character they're very they understand that you cannot do certain things when they they kind of flip it at one point the male character and you're like that's very graphic but like it's, it's more complicated than than the the messages are there and what the complications there are there to kind of elicit a certain reaction from the audience like i just think that the, the the show is way smarter i think the show is what the book thought it would be and what like edge lords and and and, and, and fucking fanboys thought they were reading back then this show is what you get when you actually have people that actually thought out what the actual topic is, which is, like, I'll even go as far as saying that to me, this show does not 
this show, especially when you get in there, no spoilers, you'll start seeing this show does not play, does not lead you on the road of Billy Butcher being some kind of hero you want to be. And I think sometimes in the comic, it tried to do that. You had people coming out there going like, yeah, I'm Billy Butcher. And like, yeah, you yeah, could about I, have- I blame that. See, I read the whole book. I read all the sides. Like, I thought that it was very clear. I think well, well, there's some hero worshiping moments that make you ask the question. Right. I thought the book was very clear on that the Billy Butcher is not a fucking hero. Right, but you're you're not you're not one of you're not one of those guys who Exactly. Who I'm not right. I'm not right. Not you're not that guy. This this show does not make it <laughs> makes it very clear where you get everybody else going and, and, and it becomes like the, the message become everybody's broken and what do you do when you're broken? Like how do you how do you react? Do you go to your base instinct and become a terrible person and hurt other people? Or do you try to become that beacon of light? Like I think there's a there's a lot better of a message here with that than you got in, in, in the comic that never got there. Like I said, I'll be interested to have the conversation with you when you actually finish all the eight episodes. Cause to me, you start seeing a, a, a better diverging path from the comic where I'm like, you know what? After I read a certain number of issues of the boys, I'm like, I don't need to read all this again. I'm, I'm good. Right. When I right. finish eight episodes of the, the show, I'm like, y'all better get a fucking second season. Because I'm not ready to, I'm not ready to stop with this, and I think that to me, the difference there, like you, at some point, you you're watching the, you're what, you're you're reading the comic, and you're just like, yeah, I can't do it anymore. It almost becomes like a, how much of this can you read, <laughs> before you're too sick to, to read to read further. I you're not gonna feel that way with the with the show. I'll put it that way. So. All right. Um. All right. Let's go. So that was Jonathan. Uh, all right. Jose says. Hello, Chris and Deepalm. Greetings from the Grand Canyon. Oh, man, we got, we got people. We got listeners all over the place. I've been working here over the summer, and your podcast has been a great source of insight and entertainment in the secluded part of the country. I'm glad we can help. My Thank question you. is about that amazing Marvel SCT, SDCC panel. From here, it <laughs> seems like they're... Um, you know what? Let's deal this now. What, no, what? no, finish the, no, finish, this, all right, all right. finish the paragraph. We'll deal with it in the paragraph. All right. From here, it would seem that moving forward, the Mar- MCU will be taking more of inspiration from modern Marvel comics with the arrival of Sam Wilson's comp- Captain America, James Foster's Thor, and more diverse characters. I never thought it would be possible, but I'm so excited to see that this will be the new reality of comic book movies. Because this diverse comic book, um, this, those, those diverse Marvel comics were the first books I ever read. Sam was my Cap, James was my Thor. That's actually really cool to hear. Um, That's fucking beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful. And it's just funny because I heard diversity so, didn't sell. I was on the Nerd Off last week. Mm-hmm. We missed you. Okay. And a question was raised, and I, I, I don't, I'm not quoting, I'm paraphrasing, and it came from Rod, and I believe it was to, he said to send it to you, how dare you? Um, I believe it was in the vein of the doubting Thomas Roll, and I get what you're doing, you're protecting yourself, we all understand it intellectually, but... When Marvel, when no one else is doing anything at San Diego, that means they heard something's coming. No, it doesn't. But okay. Okay. Wow. Okay. Cool. No, I'm just, I'm just, like, I know, I, I get, cool. I get what you guys. I can see you're defensive. I mean, I can feel, I can feel it. So yeah. no, I'm, I'm just gonna leave it at this. No, I'm just, you know, I, I, think, I think we should talk about I it. I understand right. your inclination to protect yourself from getting nothing, but. Man, Marvel, that man. Yeah, no, the the man, Marvel panel was good, but I, that's why I want to address this. I'm like, at no point did I ever say that they weren't going to be there. I was just saying that. Uh, actually, we have, we have recordings of you saying that they weren't going to be there on Saturday. Hmm? No, I didn't say that. Uh, I said, oh. no, I said, I said, no, 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 no. Here, here, when you guys Note put yourself, no, 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 extra no, no, here, here, getting an here, audio no, here here's the thing, here's the thing. When let me ask a question. When did Marvel officially announce they were going to San Diego Comic Con? The Thursday before the nerd off. No, no, no. Excuse me, excuse me. Two months prior. No, they, they didn't announce nope. Saturday panels nope. on Thursday. No, they did not. That, and that and that's my point. Like, again, this goes back to, to, to what I was trying to get everybody to understand. It's like my position on all this was to give the official answer on all this stuff. Marvel never officially announced they were going to San Diego until the Thursday before. San Diego Comic Con was announced. The articles that came out before that said Marvel were coming never had a direct quote from anyone saying that Marvel was going to be there. Never did. You cannot find one. You'll say you'll see everybody quote the same Kevin Feige quote. That's basically like, maybe we will, maybe we won't. Us me even answering that would be a spoiler. Every single article took that. Now people kind of went from there and made their own 
assumptions, and you could probably make a good assumption whether the other studios were coming it's or not. It's a logical conclusion. Yeah, you could say that. They skipped last year. They're they've probably said be no there. before, because they've right. said no. Yeah, right. They've said no before. And again, they didn't go last year, so it's a good bet that they're going to go this year. Like, that's just, that's good speculation. But when people start saying that they're definitively coming, that's when I have to say, okay, we can, we can say we want that. We can say there's a good possibility. Okay, so, but so I so have to say. What about the blog? What about, what about it? Nowhere in that article do I say that they were not going to announce the stuff. You, see, this is, okay. where I, this is where I get hurt because I feel like you guys didn't actually read what I wrote. First of all, I did, but it was a while ago. I'll be fair with that. Yeah, it was you a while got. Ago. Go, I, I can pull it up and we can read it, but at no, no point no, did no, I no, say. No, this is not that no, show. no, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying, at no point did I ever say. Would, would, you, would you at least acquiesce that some, some crow eating should occur after what we saw? No. Okay. About right, what? No, 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 but seriously, I, no, 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 no. I want to know. Co eating. No, no, no. I want. I. I want. I want to get this out. Like co eating about what? At no point did I ever say definitively that they would not be there. I said I don't know because the last time Marvel announced you said, a I don't phase, think, I don't know. I don't. I was think, a nerd off with yeah, you. I say. I say. I don't think that they will, but I don't know if they will or not. They could. They could not. I don't know because the last time Marvel announced a phase. They actually showed up at San Diego Comic Con and didn't announce there. They did not. Phase three was not announced at the 2014 San Diego Comic Con. Everybody thought they would because they skipped. I think they skipped the year before. I, I'm pushing everyone to go TG, TBGWT Premium for the month to go ahead and listen to the first Nerd Off from July. That's all I'm going to say about this. Let's move on. I'm to the just say, the, no, I'm just saying. Uh, no, but it, this, it's, this it's is important. exciting, though. Like the no. MCU panel is exciting. No, like, it was. But like, I'm, I'm Kat, just saying that. Jane like, Thor, Shang Chi, like they're Chris are doing it. Yeah, no, and and but here's the other thing too that I will say this. I also said, and I said this in my article too, that I still didn't believe they were going to do a full Phase Four announcement, and I still don't think they did. I don't think that's a full four Phase loopholes and loopholes. No, 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 um, no, 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 no. But I'm serious. It's like if Marvel has when has Marvel ever ended a phase in November? Never. So when you're saying Marvel, that that that, assur that assertion is correct because it wasn't the full phase. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that I am. Again, I think I think I think we're all we, everybody's been approaching this from a different point of view than I've been approaching this. I've always been approaching this from I'm waiting to see what they do because they can do whatever they want. And I have no idea. I don't think that they're going to announce a full slate. I still think they could still announce something new at, 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 at D23. I guess technically by the time you guys listen to this this month, they can still come out in October and, and announce something else. I, at this point, have no idea, and nobody does. My only point has always been, when we get into the idea of Marvel's going to absolutely do this, we've been proven wrong that this does not actually have to do that. That's always been my position on this. Okay. You know? It's always been. And I even said, okay. doing the nerd off stuff, okay. I was like, they're okay. probably going to announce okay. D I'm saying okay. Disney, Disney Plus shows. So, I don't I'm know. Saying okay. I'm just you know okay. I, I'm saying okay. Sam Wilson, Captain America, Jane Thor. You and I have talked for weeks about how much we've loved the the, the War of the Realms. Everything that that entire Jason Aaron story, nigga. We are here. I didn't. I didn't. So I opened up my uh, going back to pull this up. I opened up my, my comment policy. Why did nobody tell me that Jason Aaron is not giving up stuff and is writing a Jane Jane Foster Valkyrie book? He's not. Oh, is, is, it, is it Al Ewing going to write it full time? He's just, he just co-writing yeah, the yeah, first yeah, issue. Yeah, I was like, well, even then, Al Ewing writing a Jane Foster. Oh, exactly. Like, <laughs> like, why didn't I was like, why did I? I, I opened up my comic childs and I'm like, when was this? Why did I just find out about this shit? <laughs> Start getting mad at us. Right. I was like, yo, why didn't nobody tell me? Oh, first of all, first of all, I, I, I don't know what's better. Like Jason Aaron writing Valkyrie or Al Ewing solo writing Valkyrie or Jane or, or Jason Aaron and Al Ewing at least writing one issue of Valkyrie together. I was like. So why didn't nobody? So because I couldn't tell you because then you'd know what happened to Jane after War of the Realms. Oh, I caught up on War of the Realms. You should have told me. I was well. Like, I, 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 we had, I we had, you and I haven't talked comics in a while. I know. Well, I kind of knew they were making her Val a Valkyrie anyway, so I was kind of waiting for that to happen. So I wasn't. I wasn't shocked they were doing something with her, but like her own solo book, I was like, "Oh shit, nigga!" I mean, if you were mad about Jane Foster to Thor, she's not going Die away. Mad. But it goes back to what we were saying, they never go away with any of this stuff. So, exactly. um, so the question is, what characters or stories for the mar modern Marvel comics do you want to be in the MCU next? 
Uh, personally, I'm hoping for the arrival of teen heroes like Miss Marvel, Nova, Miles Spider, uh, Miles Spider Man, Ironheart. To see Otto Octavius as Superior Spider Man against Tom Holland would also be a really cool thought uh, too. I look forward to hearing your thoughts. Hope you guys are having a good one. Um, I think so Miss Marvel. I have a go ahead. Loose theory. Mm-hmm. I think the next step in the Marvel universe is going to be um, not so much going for the teen heroes i think it's going to be what we've seen already the integration of kind of time-tested tales that integrate the newer stuff like the the infinity gems is not a new story but the black order were created in 2014 Mm -hmm. uh for the children of thanos so i think that's what you're going to start seeing i think we're going to get kree scroll war i think we're getting that um that would make sense i think that that will also coincide with us eventually getting annihilation i think we're going cosmic i think that some of the things that we've seen already at the end of phase three have pointed in that direction. And like you said, we don't know where phase four is actually headed because honestly, and people are like, can't believe they're doing Blade or can't believe they're doing Shang-Chi. Nigga, name the eternal story that moves your soul. Yeah, no. After you've technically killed off Thanos. What's the eternal story that we're waiting on? No one is. Like, if anything, I'm like, how? And you look at the cast and obviously they fucking... Put something, put something into this, but the question's like, wait, how did we get to Eternals? And that's what makes you like hesitate on even guessing or speculating because honestly, none of us know, and I, I don't think any of us have the right to know. God bless them, do whatever you want. We're here for the ride. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it's it's. I I I really do think that, especially this upcoming one, this upcoming phase is going to be a lot of experimentation. Not saying that this experiment, mm-hmm. like they're they're going to be failed experiments here, but it's a lot of experimentation of them going and saying we've earned. We spent a decade earning the audience's trust. Now we can really go out there and try new things and not have a not not worry about failing. Also, I, no more Ike. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, officially, I mean, it was kind of really kind of gone in phase three, but a hundred percent gone right now. But for a full development cycle, he's been gone now. Like phase three, they altered things along the right. way that he had cha- he had touched. This is a full Ike free program. Yeah, absolutely. Um, going with that, what you were just talking about, uh, we were just talking about what, what, what we like to see. I think all the stuff we were just mentioning here, the modern, uh, a lot of the modern, modern characters, a lot of the stuff you're here, like they might not do. And again, the full integration of the Disney plus shows into a phase opens up your world, right? Cause now it's like, you can now do these teen heroes, but they don't necessarily have to have a movie. They can be a Disney plus show. So you can do young Avengers in a Disney plus show. At some point, um, cross it over with Captain America and Bucky. Right, you can do that. You can because again, remember we already have some of these characters. We have Cassie. We always forget, and Cassie's now five years older. We we got introduced to her in Ant Man. Now we have an older Cassie who's a young adult who's ready, you know, ready to kind of throw into a a young Avengers book. We've men- had to, we've we've had mention of <clears throat> not by name but kind of indirectly a Miles Morales. You know, yep. we uh, we know that Kevin Feige has said that we have plans for uh, uh, Kamala Khan, Miss um, Marvel. We have plans for there. So and we, we know this stuff is there. You know, we've heard of them. Yeah. So I, I think it's a matter of time. And I think I think it's now time to start looking at excuse me, some of the more modern stories. Like you said, to be telling like we're at the panel and Taika Waititi says, yeah, when they asked him, like, what modern stories have you looked at? And he said Mighty Thor. I was like, oh, so they're about to bring out Natalie Portman. Like, because it's like, when you say Mighty Thor, it's Jane Foster Thor. Like, that's just what it is. Like, so you, you mentioned Jason Aaron. I mean, I, and just the idea that we're, we're now to the point where you're bringing Jason Aaron's stories into, even in some kind of way, into the MCU. Oh, man, we're, we're, we're we're cooking we're cooking with like the idea of sam wilson captain america which again like you said is a recent story what was that 20 12 maybe? yeah 2012 2013 something like that so we're now into the point where because again it's been 10 years you but, have but the cool thing is that they've advanced the characters to this point without yeah. having necessarily advanced the timeline Mm-hmm. So you can tell these classic you can tell a pre-scroll war with Jane as Thor and Sam as Cap. Yep. And yep. now you've got these, and now it's fresh for everyone. Like the things they did that we appreciated the most in this 
in these previous phases was when they subverted the expectations and sometimes improved upon an existing storyline. The Vulture is much more interesting if he's uh, Betty Brant's, uh, or excuse me, Liz Allen's dad. Mm-hmm. That's just a fact. And now they've set us up in a way that they can tell these kind of stories. They can be this kind of varied. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it, it truly, it goes back to what I was saying before about it being really interesting and, and amazing that, um, you know, you have somebody like Mahershal Ali who wants to be in a Marvel film. Like, the fact that we've gotten to this point, again, I think because the way they, quote-unquote, slow-rolled it, because when you think, of it, it's really only mm. been 11 years, right? That's not really a slow roll. Which in, is crazy. In, 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 a, in a, And now like, we've got 11 products. We have 11 projects in the next two. Right. And, 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 and I think that's the thing that people were talking about, oh, it took them a long time to get this. I'm like, if you look at other studios and what other studios are doing, it has taken them far longer than 11 years to get to where Marvel is. When, when, when you look at on that stage of what they're doing, only, there was only one white male director out of the four films they announced that they officially kind of let us know about, right? Only one. Scott uh, Derrickson for Doctor Strange. Right. Only white male director. We have two female directors. We have an Asian man director, and I think Taika, what, I think he's a Polynesian Jew, as you say, because you put that, uh, right. the, <laughs> the, that Hitler video out. That's, I got to see Jojo, Jojo Rabbit now. Um, I have to now, too, after yeah, that so, uh, meme they put yeah, out. Yeah, <laughs> the Hitler meme. I got I to gotta do it now. Um, but, like, again, name another studio that has that kind of slate coming up for big budget blockbuster films. And you can't, you can't, or, or they're doing it and they're kind of burying it, which goes back to, we'll get to my Joker rant and my WB rant in a minute, but like technically DC and WB are beating Marvel to the punch here with a Chinese American director. Right. The Birds of Play, Prey movie does have one. Why weren't they there? Like you should be promoting that, but we've seen that they're position has been to kind of bury things and so to me it's there's a difference here when you have we're not just we're not just we're not just on board with the diversity and inclusion piece but we're very very loud and proud about it versus we're gonna give you some money we'll make this film but we'll be we'll we'll use when it gets close time for the movie to come out we'll use the fact that you're diverse and you're you're, you know you're you're not white to, to sell the film but outside of that, we're not going to give you the full backing of our of our studio like we are. Like, there's an incredible amount of when you look at the films that are coming out. There's an incredible amount of confidence in what they're leading. This is a these are going to be films that are not mostly white. Like, if, if people had any kind of complaint about the MC before, it was like, you know, before Phase Three, it was still very very heavily white male directed, you know, and even acted. Right. These films have very, very diverse casts. Some in, even in lead. It's you know uh, in in behind the camera. You know, and and all these things. It's like this is what, and it's taken them eleven years to do this. That is incredible. And so yeah, um, I'm so I don't I don't have a particular like character outside the ones that were already named there because at this point I'm just like, oh, they'll get to it. Like if you're gonna yeah. put if you're gonna put the shield in, in Sam Wilson's hands, if you're gonna put the hammer in Jane Foster's hands, oh, you'll get to the other sh- shit when you get to it because you know what you're doing. You saw the backlash for some of these things outside of the comic books, and you go, "We're gonna take that and we're gonna double down on it, and now we're gonna make movies off of it." And there was a funny moment that I didn't see anybody really cover at the um, Marvel panel. <clears throat> I don't know if anybody co- caught it, but I think it was when they were talking about um, making Doctor Strange like uh, you know Marvel search like horror film, and somebody screamed out, "Make it R rated!" And Kevin Feige snapped back. He was like, "It'll be PG thirteen, and you will like it." Yo, that's the thing. They're here to make money, motherfuckers. Guess who sees more movies? PG thirteen. Yeah, I mean that's it. Well, here's you know, the thing. Hardest for an R movie to make a billion dollars. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I, it's, to me, it's not even that. Because I think they could, I think they could make a billion dollars as an R-rated film. I, it, it's Marvel. They, like, but, but it's also like 
They're not the Marvel. That's not their business model. It's, you build fans. It's the same way Star Wars works. You build fans for life by capturing them as children and then carrying them on. And exactly, and that's my point. It's like, could yeah. they make a billion dollars with an R-rated film? Absolutely. Will they? No, because their model is again get them when they're young. When you get somebody writing like us to going, my Captain America was Sam Wilson and my Thor was Jane Foster. That wow. is what Marvel's going for. They're going for that. They're going to again, like you said, build these fans for life. They're not going to. They're not going to do this stupid thing and chase or chase away. And, not, and to me, it's not. It's, it's not even about the money, right? It really isn't about the money. It's about the fight idea of I can, I can, I can, I can, I can get a fan for life, and then oh, actually, it still is about the money, right? I can get a fan for life, and then and then milk off that the entire time, or I can make an R-rated film, get some money a little bit here. You know, get some kudos from critics and and not and, and be stuck, and 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 shut out some people. It's like they're not going to do that. <laughs> these com- these characters were made for kids, so you keep the movies that way. I mean, it's it's just simple. Um, moving on, uh, Peter, another one. Uh, hopefully, we, this makes a July mailbag again. Yeah, you guys again. As long as it's not the last day. <laughs> I like that we've instilled fear. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I hope all is well. I wanted to write this at the, uh, uh, this to y'all last month, but forgot. Shout out to the ADHD. Shortly after seeing the greatness that was Avengers Endgame, a buddy of mine asked if I wanted to see Dark Phoenix. That's not a buddy of yours, so I just want to let you know it's not your friend. I agreed to see, that, see it because after a decade of the greatness of Marvel, I never want to get complacent when it comes to Marvel movies or, t- or shows. Between the, greatness, between the greatness at Marvel and listening to y'all, I've learned how possible it is to just enjoy nerd things and be and to be around other nerds because we enjoy the same shit. I made two realizations while watching X-Men Dark Phoenix. First, first off, I knew Dark Phoenix was terrible when I saw after the third time of seeing Jean Grey left on the ground like a goddamn VTOL that I realized that Marvel's heroes fly way the fuck better. Thank you. I've been saying this for fucking years. He, the, the thing is, he tells you exactly why in a second. Yeah. Like, read the next line. Characters in the X-Men movies fly like they've been using 30-year-old wire work and can move in all the directions as the dudes from the Contra games. Yes. That's it. <clears throat> yeah. Fox tries to save money by going practical, and your shit looks cheap. Yeah. And, and I'm going to read this whole thing and come back to this, but absolutely. Also, in the context of people complaining about Marvel CG, CG, CGI everything, I realized something watching Dark Phoenix. Computer-generated costumes mean that the computer can do their work unimpeded. Shit, I used to be annoyed that they kept changing things in the X-Men movies so that Jennifer Lawrence didn't have to wear blue makeup and how Beast kept staying in human form rather than blue. I watched the Game of Thrones documentary and saw that uh, um, uh, 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 Emily Clark uh, uh, wake up at like 5 a.m. so that they could put a white wig on her. She looked exhausted as hell, and that was just so they could put a wig on her head. I realized that watching the tire fire of that Dark Phoenix, that my issue with the previous X-Men movies being written around Lawrence and others not having to look like their characters was unfair to the actors. I don't know if Kirk's accent came from those big ass fake teeth that they put in his mouth or if he was acting. Um, thanks for all the hard work you do. I love listening to y'all chop it up and I have y'all to thank for binging season one and two of Agent of Shield. And Chris, I kind of bummed that you correctly predicted that Marvel wouldn't have anything to, uh, to, of note to announce at Hall H this year. Y'all hate to see it. Oh, well, guess there will always be next year. Y'all really, I, I don't understand. What okay. No, no, we've, we, we've talked that to death. Okay. I don't understand where you guys got that, but okay. Okay. I, I, you guys need to read what okay. I wrote. <laughs> Seriously. Okay. I'm saying um, okay. Why are you getting so defensive? Um, cause it is kind of annoying. Um, but anyway, going back to the, the dark, dark Phoenix thing. Um, no, I've been saying this for years. Like, go back and watch. Forget, forget Dark Phoenix, right? Go back and watch. No, okay, let, me, let, me not, let me not threaten you guys with a bad time. Um, if you were to watch <laughs> YouTube videos of. Go back and watch the trailer of X Men Apocalypse. And there's a scene where uh, Olivia Munn's character, uh, Slock, she, she cuts that car in half. You can see it there in the trailer. Right there in the trailer, it's a terrible yeah. shot. And you can, you, can, you can almost, if you squint hard enough, you can see the pulley system that they're using to throw the car at her and cut it through because they didn't give a shit. <clears throat> like you said, they went to cut money as much as possible, and they, they didn't do it. Which, honestly, I don't even see as cutting money because think about The Flash on TV. Right, like they don't do things like there, there's ways. Like they were actually like we actually can save a little bit of money because we do the model once and then we have it, and so we can just kind of redo it. 
Um, and they do that a lot. Like they reuse a lot of scenes of Grant Gustin running as a Flash all the time. Um, so um, yeah, I I I don't know. I, choices were made. They made these choices, and they kept always making those choices. You know, when you start uh, doing everything practical, and then your 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 actors get so big that they no longer want to sit in the chair for that kind of stuff. Also, I think because you didn't really. One of the things that caught me at the Marvel panel was how much of a family Marvel Studio films and everything seems to be. Right. You never see that with some of these other films and studios. Right? Like, how many times do you really see them outside of a, an official promotion event for something? Right? You don't. One of the things that went under, I think, kind of went under uh, uh, um, reported from the Marvel panel was the first thing that Kevin Feige did when they walked on stage was bring out all the other producers for the films he made. Um, it's, a, it's a team and, right and, th- and, and it was at that point that he announced that Avengers Endgame was the highest grossing film of all time he, he did it for the, with his team with his family and you see it with everybody that walks out there you see that they have some and I'm pretty sure there's some out there that hate each other and go from there fine whatever okay so every, it's any other job right but you can genuinely see that these people for the most part, like working with Marvel Studios, they like working with the directors, they like working with each other, and it's funny, like, watching Tessa Thompson walk beside <clears throat> and be really, really excited for Natalie Portman, mind you, she's never been in, she, she's never, as far as I know, she's never been in a film with her. They weren't, they definitely weren't in right. Thor together. She's really, really excited about this and happening this, and they're not, they're not even filming that movie right now. That movie doesn't come out until, you know, They're not filming it, so they're filming, um, what are they filming in Australia before it? Uh, they're filming back to back to so that they at least suppress. I forget who the filming for, but right. they at least suppress a uh, statement <laughs> saying that they're excited to be staying for back to back productions in Australia to ensure that the local economy has some stability in their work life. And I was like, God damn, Marvel sounds like we're using your tax breaks to make this movie make that sound sexy, right? You know, um, it's but like, the, and the, and that's the difference between. So you see people that actually like work, and then you and then you get these you get these. <clears throat> stories like you start then hearing from people that are that are upset about the the work they did in the film or we did all this work and then it wasn't even used i got i, I did all this training for this character and then i didn't do and use any of it in the film like like you hear that kind of stuff where these other films whereas marvel you don't hear that you know you 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 see uh the joy you see the you see them acting out on set the blooper reel from uh, in in game when you see them the way they're acting and the way they 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 play around with each other you know it's like you said, it's a family atmosphere. It's the same way even with, like, Asian of S.H.I.E.L.D. You know, the way that group has come together. And they're like, they were so emotional during their panel because they're like, yo, I, I gotta stop. I'm no longer gonna see my friends. I'm not gonna... And it wasn't just, like, the other actors. It's like, no, like, our, our FX people, our, st- our stunt people, our <clears throat> the makeup, the camera people, like, all these people here are our family and we love them so much and everything they do. and you just don't hear that from other people. And I fully yeah. believe that when you have a, a good work environment and a happy work environment, you have happy workers. And that's what happens. And, and you get a great product. You know? You can it's watch... It's amazing how that works, right? Crazy, right? You can see the actors who phone it in in the X-Men films. <clears throat> Jennifer Lawrence. All of them. Uh, no, I think Jane McAvoy... And, I haven't Depending, watched. I'm sorry, I haven't watched. Yeah, this, uh, James McAvoy is definitely yeah. acting in films that that were different films than he thought they were. <laughs> like you're like, hey, hey, buddy, can you turn it down a notch? You're 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 acting right now, and I need you to act. All right, I need you to. Did uh did uh um, Magneto turn it down? He stopped acting. Um, he wasn't. I I think a little bit. Yeah, I think I think yeah. I think by this I think by this film he kind of was just like Fassbender here for that check, baby. Yeah, Fassbender was like, yeah, I'm just here to I'm just here so I don't get fined. The you check know, clear. Okay, I'll, yeah. I'll do it. Yeah, I think I think that's what happened with that. But yeah, you you can definitely tell. Sophie Turner was trying to act. And you were like, hey, 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 I need you to act with a little A, not a big A, right now. This is not Game of Thrones, and you need to kind of take it down a notch. This is this is just a paycheck. And I think that's I think think that's the problem, right? You get these things, and and um, yeah. I mean, so the the, the it's it's a spot on it's a, it's a spot on assessment of the way that they do. They're, they're, I mean, even just the difference between the X films 
and Deadpool. Yeah. You can see it there. And on Deadpool, you have some, you have a lead actor in um in uh, uh uh Ryan Reynolds who wanted clearly wanted to fucking be there, and it shows in their fucking product. So go figure. Uh, let's see here. Last one. DeAndre says, "Uh, don't hate me for being tardy, please." Again, you guys are. I, I love the fact that we've kind of trained. I guys. like the fear. Yeah. So, um, but I have a few things I wanted to ask you guys about. Starting with love, I brought I, I bought the Jason Aaron runoff of Comicsology for twenty dollars. Oh wow, that's actually a really good deal. Twenty dollars. Yeah, and it got me wondering if there were any other omnibuses you two would suggest. I am a big fan of starting and finishing series, and I am sure my ten year hiatus from comics, I missed some series along the way. Marvel and DC, please. <laughs> we we we, like, we can't we be do here. comic book clubs like that's I, I, I can't, um mm, yeah Jonathan Hickman. From Fantastic Four, even his ultimate stuff. Yeah. Everything Hickman wrote from 2007? Yeah. Until 2018, 17. Yeah. Um, Ten-year hiatus of DC stuff. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if you, if you have you ever done the Jeff Johns run of, of Flash. Obviously, we, we, could, we covered that. Oh, but 10 years, though. Maybe you talk to Scott Snyder's Batman. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You. Oh, yeah. Scott Snyder's Batman, and then <laughs> Scott Snyder's Batman, and then going into Tom King's Batman, and we we both, you're welcome, and we're sorry. Put it that way. I I, I agree with that statement. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. And you're sorry. Um, I've always g- given thought about this. Some of the the newer Rebirth stuff is really great. Like um, especially I, I'm always bigging up in this 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 uh this run. Uh, the Green Arrow run, I love that. I love Benjamin Percy's run on Green Arrow. Uh, Williamson's Flash is amazing. Yeah, Williamson's Flash is great. So a lot, of, a lot again, you can't go wrong with a lot of the the, the rebirth stuff there. Um, damn. I again, go back and listen to some of our character corners. I know later on in the email you we mentioned some of our character corners. You'll find us talking about a lot of the that that stuff there. Um, define again if you've been if you've been on a hiatus for ten years, you've don't listen to 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 some of the wrong people there. Like you missed some great stuff. There's a lot amazing of great stuff, stuff out there. There's some, there's some really great, amazing stuff from both Marvel and DC out there to get. So, um, but yeah, if you start there again, just if you just start this, start Scott Snyder's, you know, Batman run, and then go into Tom King's, you'll. Oh boy. Um, uh, the next one is a random, but I was browsing uh, Pinterest uh, for my wallpaper of the week and scroll past a panel of Peter from a different universe. That is uh, brutally murdered by Sandman and mistaken identity, left and left dead. I didn't even want to finish the comic. I eventually, I will eventually, but I wanted to know if there were any deaths that took place that bothered you, or that you felt were senseless. I'm not sure why this death bothered me uh, so much, but I can't even look at that scan anymore. Hmm. Do you have one? Um, like. The early 2000s fridging of people was all bad. Like, I think modern comics, no, because generally it's part of the story. If it's not the end of the story, then it's, an, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a part that matters. I think they've made death matter again more in comics. So more recent examples, I don't really have any, but, like, I guess Alex in that first issue of Green Lantern, like, yeah, there's tons of fridging examples. There used to be a blog written by one, Gail Simone. Um, but, no, I think in more recent stuff, I felt... Just, I felt like the deaths we've gotten is like even like when Jean died in Morrison's run, they kept her dead until this year. Mm-hmm. Like, there's that joke about the character, but I think the deaths and rebirths have been taken with such weight because we've got fans writing now. So that when you bring back a Bucky Barnes or a Jason Todd, it matters. It's not just, oh, we're bringing it back to pop a rating. It's like, oh, we've got a story to tell with the redemption of both of those characters, which I thought was, you know, still very funny to pull off at the same time and no one. Really took it a task for it. Um, do you have any that stick out for you? No, uh, I think I think you covered it. I mean, most of the times, like it's... Superman, it's Superman. Are you want that one? Superman. They sold black fucking warm bands <laughs> and chromium covers. Yeah, and we all knew he was coming back. Uh, I was gonna. I was. You know, it's funny you mentioned Superman. I was actually gonna mention uh, <laughs> Superman, but in BVS. <laughs> See. That's why you're not shit. <laughs> so I was That's like, because that was I was I was like, you guys better not. You guys, they fucking gonna. God damn it! Like, 
Can you can you get more hack? No. And the, and, the, and, the, and the, we know we know the answer to that, and the answer is no. Can so. Uh, my third point was I uh, thank you guys both for your Fantastic Four character corner uh, that I listened to again. The other day, I'm I'm happy that uh, Feige mentioned them and mutants during the Hall H. Your excitement in going through Hickman's run made me even more excited for the future of the MCU and going forward and finally uh, going forward in his series and comics. Finally, can we get a Norn Red uh, character corner? If he comes packed with Galactus, I will be happy. But the Surfer was one of the first characters to pop up, uh, pop out at me as a kid, and I would love to hear both of your thoughts on him and now uh, and how he has been written. I mean, now that we're, especially now that we're doing some shorts, I think we can definitely uh, carry yeah, this. Because hmm? you haven't read Dan Slott's run. Uh, that is actually, see, again, guests lie on me all the time. I, I don't know. You, you and I haven't talked about comics in a while. Have you read it? I, I've read, um, I did. It, it, was, it wasn't even recent. It was like, <clears throat> it was like last year sometime because you actually, again, I, I understand. Okay, look, I understand my history with French. I get it. All right. But I actually Good. do I'm listen glad to you. you. Understand facts. When it when it comes to comic books, I actually do listen to you and read comics. I do that all the time. So I am actually quite offended. That you well, said I that. used I used a line from the last issue of that run in my wedding vows. Like that's the most romantic, beautiful comic I've ever read in my entire life. Yeah. Uh, when and gonna, oh, go if we're going to do Norrin Rad, I'll have we'll have to do at least a comic book club on that run. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I think that's a I think that's a great run to to do one on. So yeah, absolutely. Um. Oh, once again, I apologize for the long and late email. You guys are awesome and premiums worth every penny and then some. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. No, thank you for being premium. So that's awesome that you guys are premium. Yes. All right, whew, man, we got through all that stuff there. Um. All right, you want to do the bad or the good first? Take, you're in charge, man. Drive the ship. I'm here to ride. Nigga, I asked you a get question. Ang- get angry. Let's leave, let's leave on a good note. So get mad first. So, um, the Joker film is opening at, uh, I think, the Venice Film Fe- Festival and also uh, the Toronto Film Festival. Uh, you mind if I tee this up for you? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Chris, you just mentioned uh, Joker's premiering at the Venice Film Festival. Mm-hmm. I have to ask. Um, it's a two-part question. First part, does the choice in venue worry you? And secondly, knowing with the recent comments made by the, I want to say, auteur in charge of this film, how do you foresee this going? I foresee this going. There's going to be a lot of praise heaped on this film, and we're going to be told that it's the greatest comic book film of all time. People are going to go out there and see the film, and it's going to be a good film. But people are going to wonder, like me, why the fuck it was called Joker. Because would you, would you agree that this seems like a script that was written and couldn't get made until they attach it to an existing property while making it distinctly different and not all related to aforementioned property? Well, oh, they would not. They would never. They, there, there is no way that somebody would take a film and slap a comic book character's name on it in the hopes of selling more tickets to mislead fans. There's no, it's not like there's been a history of that happening with certain films in the film, film genre. Never. That would never, that would never, no. Uh, for those who want to know why uh, I feel a certain way, <clears throat> July 8th, Todd Phillips, <laughs> the director of Joker, said he expects Joker backlash because the film doesn't follow anything from the comics. Can I get two petitions in here? Go ahead. Go ahead. Todd Phillips, who you may remember from such noted art piece, The Hangover, is doing something that we see actually in your television every day. It's the same way Eminem wins the rap battle at the end of Eight Mile. Talk about yourself first. And how can they shoot at you? Because now, anyone who criticizes it is, look, I was right. These fucking haters. Meanwhile, he's going to put out this Drek, this incel fucking celebration starring a man who, I remind everyone, spent wasted a year of his life pretending to be a rapper for a bad movie. 
I've been told Joaquin Phoenix is a great actor. I've seen his movies. I don't get it. I've been I've seen it printed that this is going to be a genre defining role. They also told me that Batman v Superman was good. I don't get it. So when the praise comes and when the accolades come, there's one place you can come where we will not. You know, I take it back. Maybe let's just say, Chris, I want to go on record. If it's phenomenal, I'll go see it and I'll admit it. Like if I talk to people I trust and they tell me this is they they have knocked it out of the fucking park. They've told a unique, necessary story and the Joker imitations, while not immediately apparent, clearly creep through the underside. If they can build a way for me to enjoy the movie, I'll go see it. I'm willing to bet a large sum of money that doesn't happen. When I read the comment from him, I took a deep breath in it. It was like that meme that's like a person taking uh, that, that, that character care, <laughs> taking a deep breath and then going and pointing going, bitch! Like, I just, like, how dare you? Yes. I, I just, <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? Like, I don't think people, like, I remember when I when I posted this comment first in like on my page and I had people coming in. Well, no, I'm looking forward to a different take. Listen, here's the thing, guys. I had the same conversation with Shannon about Pennyworth, and I was like, I'm not, I don't give a fuck. She was like, No, it's really good. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I wasn't even going to stay to watch. I didn't even stay to watch the 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 pilot episode of Pennyworth, and my reasoning for it was, fuck you. You are not because it was like the idea was. Well, if you take the fact that it's it, it's Alfred Pennyworth from Batman, it is a good kind of like spy thriller. So I'm like, if you but remove that, but the that, central conceit, I like it. And 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 that's my problem. To me, all of this is insulting. So Todd Phillips' first com- for, uh, uh, full comment was, "We didn't follow anything from the comic books, which is going to make people was go- what people were going to be mad about. We just wrote our own version where a guy like Joker might come from." That's what's interesting to me. We're not even doing Joker, but the story of becoming Joker. It's about this man. So, so what you're telling me is you didn't respect the source material enough because you didn't think it was serious enough and you had to go and put your own verse. You cannot explain to me how what Todd Phillips is doing here is any fucking different than when Brian Singer did with the fucking X-Men films. You cannot tell no, me. No, it's worse difference. because this isn't just ignoring 80 years of continuity and, t- and literally um, audience tested like we know what works with the Joker. He's not just ignoring it. He's actively throwing it away. Like it's in so move cotton. Let's see how that works out for him. It's in- and the reason why it's insulting when you mean is because it, 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 it means it's another way of it's an end around of, of basically saying because now they can't they can't attack. They can't attack successful comic book films like they used to. They can't go. Oh, they're not serious enough. They don't got the good enough actors. They don't do this. They don't. They don't look. They can't attack it that way. So now they go around this in around way of basically saying that. Oh well, we're different. We're telling a different. We're telling a more serious story. We're doing. Yeah, we're the doing Jason different. Whitlock of comic book movies, right? Because the good blacks. Because because you know, <clears throat> for those of you who don't. Who don't who want to watch a comic book film, but you don't respect comic books? We got you covered. And to me, I'm like, fuck you. Why don't you respect comic books? Right. It's like it's it, it's a different version of when people used to sit there and go, I don't read comic books. I read graphic novels. I'm like, motherfucker. A graphic novel for the most part is just bundled up fucking comic books. I don't even correct him anymore. I said, okay, cool. And then I keep talking. Like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't read. I didn't read the Watchmen comic. I read the Watchmen graphic novel. I'm like. Motherfucker, what? Okay, okay, congratulations. You're fucking. Oh, congratulations. Your Starbucks coffee is so much better than the fucking McDonald's coffee. It's not just, you know, mass produced fucking coffee. Congratulations, guys. What the fuck, man? I didn't realize there was a, are you, I'm that walking in a coffee war? Are you no, okay? I, no, I'm just it, just. it's just one of the things. That just, it just bothers me about people who want to try to make themselves feel better because. Right. They don't. You don't respect comic books. In order to get you in the fucking seat to actually take something serious, you have to feel like you're not watching it. And to me, fuck everyone involved in that. There is a way. There, I'm not going to sit there and try to sit there and say there isn't a way to do a Joker film. There is. I mean, I know uh, I haven't read it, but I know people are talking all the time about the, uh, the White Knight comic, right? Where they kind of do that alternate version of, of Joker and stuff like that. So 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a way to do a Joker story. But people are like, oh, uh, people are making excuses like, oh, well, no, ma- you know, they told a Joker story in like <clears throat> the killing joke and they did this. I'm like, Batman's still around there, guys. Like, it's still told in the context of. Those are Batman stories. That's still a Batman story, right? It's like, <clears throat> I, you know, I, I feel so, I feel bad sometimes shitting on Pennyworth because I'm like, I nobody gives a fuck about Alfred. Because I remember when we talked about that issue of Batman with Tom King where Alfred. It's told from Alfred's point of view, taking care of Bruce because Bruce is sick and stuff like that. And you're like, oh, that's Bruce's daddy. That's Bruce's dad. And you get that sense there. But guess what? Even that story is still told in the context of Bruce Wayne and Batman. It only works because Bruce Wayne and Batman exist. When you remove Bruce Wayne and Batman out of that, I do not give an ounce of a fuck about Alfred. I don't care. And it's no longer Alfred. If you want to tell some fucking spy story, go tell your fucking spy story. Leave Alfred's name out your fucking mouth. If you want to tell a story about some man <laughs> who was a clown who goes out off the deep end and do that, guess what? You want to know why they call it Joker? Because they've told that fucking story 10,000 fucking times. I'm tired of hearing people talk about how I'm tired of seeing sequels. I'm tired of seeing rebates and remakes and all the other stuff. I want something different. But then Joker is no different than any other fucking film you've seen. You've seen that fucking film before. The only difference here is they're putting the Joker's name on to make you think that it's something different. The same fucking story as some white dude gets down on his luck and goes out to the bad side. We've seen that fucking story. That story has won Oscars before. It has. This is not new. The only difference here is they're using the name of Joker to try to hope to sell fucking tickets. Imagine if this film wasn't called Joker. If it was just called Clown, would anybody be going to see it? I mean, remove they're the Joker. The, yo, they're name dropping someone to get into the club, pretending like they don't know when no, they're there. I'm, I'm serious. This is bullshit. To, to all you out there. You don't like the comic? Your shitty movie's not getting made without the Joker name. I'm, I'm serious. Like, to all y'all out there going, oh no, I'm interested in seeing this. I'm interested in seeing this. If it wasn't called Joker and it was just called fucking Clown, would you even know about it? The answer is no. So this is what bothers me about this. It's insulting. Here's the thing. I actually bet the film will probably be good. It will be good. It will be. Just like Logan It'll was a well good done. Logan Logan will be a good film. I but when, watch that still. But when but but when I think about it, I'm thinking about the fact that they use Wolverine's name and name dropping things on there just to, just to put that film out there and it was a film that we've seen before that you repackage and just throw on a comic book character's name on it like imagine if they did a Joker film and it was like in the vein of that episode of uh, uh, of the anime series was I Almost Got Him or something like that or even the episode what was the episode for um, where uh, it's um that one guy that was Joker was that a comic book or was that an episode where there's that one guy that like Joker kept thinking it was his best friend and kept showing up? Oh, uh, that was it's happened a couple times in the comics. Yeah. Most notably, Brian Azzarello did that one shot Joker where it's told yeah. from the hunting point of view the whole time. Like, imagine if you like if you did that movie, I'd watch that. I'd wa- I actually would watch. Is it that. set in the Batman world because it's about the fucking Joker? So now you you've told a Batman story. Set in the appropriate world, and here's my here's the question I always ask people. I was asking people about Joker. <clears throat> you need Bat Joker depends on 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 you, telling a Joker story depends on a Batman because what if you don't tell me if you tell me what Batman you're using, I can already form a picture of what the Joker is. <clears throat> if it's sixty six Batman, I know that Joker. If it's Dark Knight Batman, I know that Joker. If it's um hell. Chris, if it's, you mean there's source material with this character this is before? That's crazy. So so when you, lots of different iterations so, to choose from. So, so so to me, when you sit there and go, we're telling our own Joker story, and I don't care about the source material, it's not based on the comics. My thing then goes is I cannot inform a picture of what this Joker is. I don't have the context to know how to feel about this Joker because the the context is Batman. And you cannot build a context of Joker with absent of a Batman. 
it does not fucking work. It's like building a console right. of Venom, an Eddie Brock Venom, with no Spider-Man. But even then, also even but, but here's but here's the thing. Even there, this is why the Joker film's even dumber than the Venom film. There's only really been one kind of Eddie Brock Venom. We know what that is, right? A uh, a symbiont that, that and, and uh, uh, two p- things that are very jealous or either jealous or needy of of of, of Peter Parker or Spider-Man. We get that. I, I can form that picture. It's very one-dimensional. I understand it. Maybe if you go like alternate verse or things like that, but you can kind of understand. Like I say, Eddie Brock Venom. You have a picture in your mind right now. Right. If I tell you, if I say, give me your picture of a Joker, you have 50,000 different Jokers. Because it depends, right? It depends on what era, what Batman. Mine's Luke what, Skywalker. Right. Start going to animated. Like, what is, your, what is your version of the Joker? What is it? And, it's, and so that's why doing a solo Joker film with no Batman becomes a heady thing. So now they're hedging their bets. And like you said, they're setting it up so that if you don't like the film, it's like, well, I told you guys we're going to like the film because we're more, we're above that. We're above the comic books. Go fuck yourself. It didn't succeed because comic book fans got mad because we want to play their game. That's that, that. By the way, that's, if it flops, that's your headline. Imagine if... He built it in Imagine if somebody... Would, it, it, you know, people are mad at D&D for, for Game of Thrones and how it turned out. Imagine if, instead of what you got in those seasons, in those eight seasons, imagine if just starting in season one, they set it in modern times, and they went to space in season two. And in season three, all of a sudden, there was an alternate universe. Imagine if that's what they did. And they basically came out and were like, we're going to keep doing this, but, you know, yeah, because, you, know, you know, we're not going to really follow George R.R. Uh, R. Martin's uh, uh, a book. You guys would fucking lose your goddamn mind. You guys already lost your minds over fucking the Lord, uh, 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 Lord of the Rings and the, small, the changes that uh, Peter Jackson made to that. Right? You guys, the, the small changes to, uh, still catching for the most part the, the, the essence of the books, people lost their shit over some of the small changes Peter Jackson made to the Lord of the Rings. But when you come books and comic book characters, characters that sometimes have existed way longer than some of the characters you know. Again, the, the Joker character been around since what the 30s 40s and we're still going to the idea of ah oh, i'm gonna do my own thing with it fuck it and i'm not gonna use any of the source material i'm not gonna pull from any of the errors and then that rich history that you can literally mine for days you can if you really want to tell a joker story you can mine information for fucking days but we allow it this is why i don't give quarter to people because they're gonna go whoa you know i'm still interested no fuck that why why? 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 We don't allow anybody else to do that with any other kind of fucking fucking genre. People, people will people lose their shit just if you change the gender or the race of what, one of their favorite fucking characters. You get a black woman on Star Trek, all of a sudden it's like, whoa, whoa, what the fuck? Even though that's in built into Star Trek shit lore, people still lo- lost their shit over that. But telling a Joker story that doesn't doesn't rely on anything from the comics and the rich history of the character, ah, it's fine. Absolutely fucking not. Absolutely fucking not. How fucking dare you? How fucking dare you? Um, speaking of how dare you, uh, I saw you you posted this in the in in the group today. Um, so Aquaman three is, I mean Aquaman two is being delayed to when? Um, at the very least, I think it's twenty twenty two. What are we doing? What are we doing? But it's listed for December. So that if James Wan's untitled horror project runs even a day over, it's probably going to be pushed to 2023. So safe to assume you'll see it in 2024 when all of us will have forgotten the billion dollars, apparently, that I found out today that this movie made. I did not know that until today. Oh, you didn't didn't know that it made a billion dollars? I had no fucking (laughs) mostly overseas. You know why? Because Warners didn't celebrate it. No, they 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 kind of did, but but not. like when when a, when a Spider Man or a Avengers breaks a billion, they get new commercials, Chris. Oh well, you you wonder why? Also, because when you make most of your money overseas, and like it's it's okay <laughs> domestically, but hey, whatever, you know, good on them, you know, good. Hey, you know, twenty twenty three at the probably earliest. 
Good on them. It makes a billion dollars, so you take six years to make another one? Why isn't something... Why? And it's so frustrating because I know the answers, but I'm still asking the questions out loud. Why is there no fucking plan ever? I mean, well, I mean, if we're going to go with no fucking plan ever, and I love these two people. I love Tom King. I love Ava DuVernay. Um, but I'm tired of seeing them together on Instagram and teasing new gods, but I don't have a new gods date. Like, it feels like empty promises. And I'm, and I'm not talking, and I know it's not It feels them. like they're smoking weed and just sending emails back and forth about wouldn't it be cool if. And again, this is not, I, I don't think it's their fault, but I find it interesting and weird that we got the announcement of, we got the official announcements of her doing New Gods, like I want to say a year, maybe two ahead of any news about Marvel officially doing Eternals. When, when the inter- we knew who was directing Eternals. Uh, I think her name was uh, Chloe Zhao. We knew she was directing Eternals, but Marvel kept silent about actually confirming it, right? Everybody knew. It was open secret. Everybody knew who was directing all these films and when these films were coming, right? The film comes out next year. New I'm Gods. So mad. New Gods still has not gone into production. How is this? How am I still letting them hurt me? I don't even watch their movies anymore. And they're still hurting me, Chris. Like they 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 did this weird announcement. It's like, oh, Tom King has helped write, you know, uh, new guys. I'm like, all right, that's great. <clears throat> What's the date? That just means y'all niggas haven't written shit yet. What's the that's like? Date? Hey, it's, it's time to turn your project. The good news is I just started it. We have dates for we have apparently have a date for Sazam shooting uh, to two shooting mid 2020. We know that this bird Birds of Prey movie is supposed to come out next February. You know. We have we we know that uh, Wonder Woman got delayed. I think what to next year? Yeah, Wonder Woman got delayed. Uh, 1984 got delayed to next year. We have dates for films. <clears throat> Yet, New Gods was announced. When? I I've lost track. It's just sad to even try to keep track of. Like, like apparently today Ava's confirmed the Dark Side for a new guys movie. I'm like, all right, cool. And it, it says, meanwhile, here, your <laughs> lack of news and your lack of promotion is allowing these fucking Snyder assholes to flourish. Yep. Yeah. You wanted to stop it. You could squash that shit tomorrow, Warner. You could do it. Yeah. You so won't. I, I, let me apologize. Uh, she was an officially announced to direct New Gods March of last year. At the same time, I'm also seeing another thing that says that they're wrapping part one of the script like today or something like that. It's <laughs> week, August, week, my nigga. Week, week, uh, week one of the, the New Gods script. So we're writing the script now, which means we not might not see this movie again for another five fucking years. Oh no, 2022 is the I I think Bards of Prey is moving. Oh you, you oh I didn't think about that. But I you, you know what? It goes back to what is I was saying. Hit about, February next year? And we got nothing so far. Nigga. It's supposed to be it's supposed to be ready. It should be ready, right? You should have footage something, and that's why I was shocked that they weren't like <clears throat> There's I, no, I, I heard I heard the reason a February why February drop will be very interesting to see them hit. So I um uh the reason why I said earlier that I you know wasn't sure about uh, people moving out of the way of Marvel's way that's like for Warner Brothers Warner Brothers Hall Age presentation always hits hard like even if I'm not there for their DC shit it's not just DC like it's Warner Brothers the entire they usually have a longer time they go from like eleven to one I think sometimes even eleven to one one thirty they cover just they they start with their DC stuff and then they come into other stuff they have they have um. The Godzilla movies again, Hobbs and Shaw, like that should have been at San Diego Comic Con. So I was very, very interested that they they weren't there for anything. And I I I heard on the grapevine that part of it was because of some increased fees or something like that. Here and some studios are thinking that well, instead of paying San Diego, I can just do it myself. So we'll see what happens with that. I'm interested in the fact that Warner Brothers just wasn't there at all to break any of their shit outside of that because they're. They always do well on their panel. They're, they always get good reviews for their panel. They get people hyped. They let them down when the movie they comes get, out. They get that curve. They get that grading curve on their panel. Yeah, Fuck they, that. no, they. Well, it's it's the idea of they do a really good job of the. They they do. They 
Here's the thing. They put out really good panels. When it comes to actually um, putting something out, they don't. But here you have, you would think that it was, they, they would have something to show for Wonder Woman. Because they, they, they showed, last year, they showed footage from Wonder Woman. So you would think that even with Wonder Woman being delayed and coming out next year, they would have more footage to show for Wonder Woman. So they didn't do that. You would think that they would show things for the Birds of Prey movie. Didn't do that. You would think, again, another fuck you to Joker, you would think with the Joker film coming out in October, they would show something for Joker in front of that 6,000 people at San Diego Comic-Con, but the fact that they turned down fucking San Diego Comic-Con for your Joker film should tell you everything you need to know about how they feel about a con- the Joker film when it comes to comic books. Um, but again, you have Hobbs and Shaw. You have Fast and Furious. I don't think any of the Fast and Furious movies have ever come to, um, to San Diego. Like That's a crowd for that kind of shit. So I don't know why they didn't do that and why they don't come out to any of that shit. Um, but then they it's do the things wildest, like, It's the weirdest decision in the world. It's the weird, but there was a lot of weird decisions this year. Like HBO has keeps doing that. Ter- keeps doing a terrible, terrible Westworld panel. Um, it's been terrible the last three years in a row. It's fucking boring. It sucks. It really fucking sucks. But then they drop during the Westworld panel. They drop the 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 Watchmen TV show trailer. Now, like, why isn't Watchmen here? You should have been there. Like there was a lot of weird decisions this year at San Diego. I don't know where they came from um, and why why they did some of these decisions. It didn't. None of it made any fucking sense. But um, going back to 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 the stuff with WB, like I'm just tired of this. We don't. What what happened with the Flash movie? Welcome. Join me. Come. There's room on the bench. Where's the Flash movie? Where's come it come with me. I invite everyone who can hear my voice. Join me and sit this shit out. Where where don't go see any more of their shit. Don't do it. Don't support this. Because even when they hit, let's say, uh, let's say Aquaman and Shazam are, are good movies that I just haven't seen yet. What next? There's never a plan for next. Stop rewarding this shitty behavior and lack of a plan. Sit the fuck out. Do not, pay, do not patronize these films. They have not earned your loyalty. They have not earned your trust. There's no reason to go see these movies. Now we're, now we're getting, oh, well, no, the Black Adam film was supposed to, uh, expected to start filming late 2020. 2007, this nigga was cast. Twelve whole, whole ass years ago. And now we're talking about a script? Chris, I beg of you, join me on the sidelines. Get out, because we care more than they do. Oh, no, no you don't understand. I, I've, I've been out. <clears throat> no, I'm saying don't even like. I want us as a network to stop watching this shit. Oh no, no. So, so here's the thing. If if you if I, if I if I get it for free, I'll watch and review it. I don't pay for this shit, and I don't encourage anybody to pay for because you do not. Again, it's the reason why I didn't watch uh, some other. Like, I'm not gonna I'm not going to reward you with my money when you don't seem to have any care. Um, people also forget that when they also did the whole thing of uh, this was back in again November of 2018. Remember they talk about doing a Blue Beetle film. <clears throat> Blue Beetle I film in the that. works. At, Blue Beetle in the works at DC. Have you heard anything about it since? I have not. Hey, remember when Sony and, and so we don't pick on pick on WB here. Remember when Sony said that they were going to do. Um, uh, the the silver and black, the black hat and, and silver saber, saber movie, and then they were like, I do, I made fun of that and, and movie then, on this podcast, and then and then and then and then they split it into you know, oh, we're gonna do a black hat movie, and then we're gonna do silver saber movie, and they, they announced that they were getting a black woman to direct, and they were like, oh, it's gonna happen, and then you know what happened? Did, did anybody hear about that film since then? Whole lot of nothing. Meanwhile, Marvel put Howard the Duck in their big battle scene. Like, at this point, I don't even want to get to the idea of us, like, even comparing it to Marvel. Like, this isn't normal for a normal thing. <clears throat> Why announce all this stuff and then never have it happen? And especially when you have a history of, like, again, remember, 20, we're, we're reaching a point where this should be the end of phase one, if you will, of the DCEU. Because remember when they brought Jeff Johns on and they had, Jeff Johns talking to uh, Kevin Smith 
it was a it was a TV special talking about all the films they had coming out and the long list of films yep, and all the, the plans, and all the plans. They love some plans, don't plans, they? plans on plans on plans that none of them went through on. Now there's a new plan. Well, what's the plan? It's new. The Batman, like I think, I, I here's the thing, like if you go by by we're planning on shooting late 2020. DC's going to have like 10 movies come out in 2021. Because everything comes in. Here we go. Here we go. Filming uh, release date of 2021 with filming start to, starting uh, the end of 2019 or the beginning of 2020. So right now, that's the Batman. You got them still doing uh, Wonder Woman. So that'll be coming out next year. Uh, there's supposedly, uh, I'm assuming this Birds of Prey movie is coming out. Why? They shot something, but then again, so did New Mutants. Exactly. You know, I'm not assuming anything until until it's the day before release because they've shown that, that they'll they'll advertise the movie, then pull it, and then push the day back. Like this is this is a level of incompetence for a company that literally didn't have to be acquired or anything. They've owned up uh, DC for years. They still don't have a machine to turn what sells on the page into something on the big screen, something that's palatable to the masses. How dare they tell us what's coming next? Just drop what you got to drop and hope that we like it. You haven't earned the, the public trust. You've abused it every goddamn turn. Like, the reason why I'm very, not even nervous, but I just do not take any, I take all the Ava and, and Tom King stuff with a grain of salt. And again, it's not a reflection on them. But when you tell me <clears throat> that you announced her in 2018, and now you got Tom King, who's also still writing comics and doing all this other stuff. And they are working on just the, the first round of scripts for this movie. We know what happens when scripts get done over there at DC. They work hard on the script. The script gets done. Then somebody higher up looks at the script and goes, change it all. And then the people, the creative team goes, fuck you, I'm gone. <clears throat> Remember, they brought Ben Affleck in to direct, not just be the Batman, but to also direct it. And I get, I, I get it. Like, we've talked about that. I've talked about this on the Nerd Off. Hey, you know, Ava's different. She has creative control over her stuff. Like, sure. We go see. Don't, I do. I, I, again, I'm, call me hedging my bets, and maybe I just do that so much with all this shit. But, like, I'll believe it when I see it. Because, again, going off of what I've seen, there's, I mean, no. And, and yo, know, they, they do not have a good track record with female minority directors. They don't. They just don't. And so, okay. And we'll see. And I'll also say this because, again, fuck it at this point. I don't care. A wrinkle in time, which is okay. Just okay. So, you know, for kids, cool. We'll see. This is a, this is a, I, I just, there are a lot of pieces here and a, and, a, and a studio with a track record that is not good. Maybe again, just like Shazam, this will pull it out. <clears throat> But then you got the other aspect of it. Let's say it is good. Let's go with let's go with the positive, right? That it is good. Everything works out. Is DC going to um, DC DC going to going to promote it? Hmm. What's the budget on it? They're going to market hmm. it like they did like they like they didn't do for Shazam, which is their best film, and you know didn't even make Ant Man money. I'm also very interested in seeing how we do it while we're doing a dark side movie when all the justice we're not doing justice. I, you know what? Let me just stop. Yeah, what's wasn't there a good side of this too? You want to talk about good things too, right? Um, yeah, let's talk. I think we've already kind of uh, let's talk about these Disney Plus shows. Um, I think this is where I'm really excited to see what they do with these Disney Plus shows because. It's something that we've talked about before. Even like with Asian Shield, Asian Shield kind of, and, and you know, Jeff Lowe talked about this during the Asian Shield panel. 
they had to they they were given a, a slice of the of, of they were told dictated from the movies what they could play with and what they could do right the disney plus shows are fully integrated into phase four and will now dictate some certain things to the movie which once again we're seeing marvel change the game a bit because I don't know of another time when this has happened where you're now watching a TV show and you have to, like, not a one-off, but like, this is going to have huge effects on going forward. I don't, I don't know when that, I don't, I don't know how that, that is. So, um, what just happened? I'm sorry. We lost my train of thought. We just had an intruder on the show real quick. So, um, <laughs> Anyway, but no, I'm saying the um, security. Right, fucking gotta call security and shit. Um, yeah, I, th- I think it's interesting, like the idea that WandaVision, which makes sense when you start thinking about just mm-hmm. the name of it, that WandaVision is going to directly impact, you know, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. You're like in the Multiverse of Madness, like, and and, and let's let's also be real about this. Impact does not mean you have to watch WandaVision. The movies are going to hit a larger audience. It's the same way with the oh yeah, uh, small comics and then crossovers. The movies are going to hit more audience than Disney Plus will. So if you don't get Disney Plus, you can still watch these movies. I think the experience is going to be greatly enhanced by those of us who watch them both. And I say those of us because Chris, I think you and I both know we're behind this. Uh, <laughs> I was never. I'm sorry, I was never in that group of people that tried. Yeah, to you and I were never lying about that kind of shit. Hey, come on, we're getting star, we're getting star 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 Wars content and Marvel content. I'm like, nigga, just take, for seven ninety nine a month, nigga, take my money. What the fuck are we doing? Like, so nigga, apparently the new HBO Plus is just gonna be a Hulu add-on, which right. makes it more attractive. Right? Come on, come on, nigga. Let's let's not let's not get stupid here. But yeah, I um, and the same thing we were talking about, like with the Captain America, um, Captain America, the Falcon, and 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 the Winter Soldier. Like, okay, sure, guys. Sure, just and, we know and, it's Captain America and Bucky. I can't wait for the name change. Yeah, I mean, well, I, and I, and I I'm looking forward to the idea of we're going through this and 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 Sam kind of going following the, the comics and Sam not being comfortable with it and then the end of it is him fully embracing the Captain America name and now is Captain America and Buck like I get it like I'm I'm there we've yep. I've been I've, yeah. we've been to it's, the, it's a story to be told and we're excited to be having it told to us I've, I've been I've been I've been, we've been through all of this stuff the idea of bringing in the Ting rings and, and finally bringing in the Mandarin the real Mandarin and things like that like all these things have been have have, have been seeded and planned and I like the idea of even if they didn't have the plan beforehand it's the idea of Marvel always going to mine their own history Right. How can we go back and do this? We didn't. Maybe we didn't have a plan for it before, but we can now do it now. We can now now put a plan in for it now. Like all this stuff makes it very very exciting to see where they go with it. And like I said, I, I we don't know, and they can do anything. And I think that's the most fun. Again, we can look at the comics and see some things that kind of stand out. Um, and again, like like Feige even said, it's like that doesn't even include. The Fantastic Four and 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 X Men. He didn't say X Men. He said, he said the, the mutants. The mutants. You know, so I think that's there. There's a lot there that you can do, and um, I'm really excited for that. Like we're in for some. We're in for some real fun times. Real fun times. So, um, anything else we got to talk about before we hop into comics? Are we doing pull list too? My goodness, let's do it. Um, well, it's mostly going to be you. Like I said, I, I talked about this up front. Like, I'm trying to catch up on X-Men. Like, once I get done, I'm off on Friday. So, I'll buy, by next week, I will be completely 100% caught up on all the X-Men stuff. I, I literally, I think the You want to issue a separate pull list next weekend? Actually, you want, yeah, we can do that. We, we can do that. Let's just do a separate pull list. So, so that way I can gather my thoughts, kind of cr- create some stuff I want to talk about. And we can come together and both we'll talk about things we've been reading and kind of, we won't, what we'll do is we'll, we'll build also, let's, let's talk offline, but build a line for spoilers, like maybe a month or two back. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I remember I, I, I got all the way up through what well, we talked about last mailbag when you caught up with the whole Legion and, and Nate thing. You talk about that last, um, last mailbag. And I was like, yes. I'm not gonna lie. That's why I was like, I didn't, I was, I was fine with you kind of announcing and going through things. Cause I was like, I, I was started reading. I was like, I was vaguely, I was like, oh, I, I think God, I was like, this is what Deepon was talking about. I was like, that's, nigga, that sounds like a lot. And then I read it. I was like, oh, nigga, it was a lot. 
and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> it was a lot of that. Well, but but again, going back to mining or mining 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 things here. Remember when we did our cable? <clears throat> I think we covered a little bit of X Men slash Nate in in that cable uh, character corner. When we did that, there's a there's a part of that run where Cable kind of becomes a god himself, you yeah. know. And so you kind of so mining the the history of you know this being a really really powerful dude, and then throwing in the life seed and things like that. Like there's a lot in here that I I started reading, going like, huh, I remember that thread, huh, I remember that, yep. huh, I remember that. Oh yeah, that happened too. Like, and I think that's what I always love about Marvel is that. The things that you thought happened years ago that weren't going to come back up come show show back up, you know. I'm like, wait, we still talking? They make about it all Sugar count. Man? We still talking about Sugar Man and Dark Beast? We still doing that? We still? Oh shit! We still talking about Age of Apocalypse? We still? Like, can you? If you told young, I don't even know how old I was at that time, but you told young Chris that in 2019 we still be talking about Age of Apocalypse shit, I told you to get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. It, it lasted. I'd have been like, oh, I was right. They, they're not going to turn it back after six months. I can't believe it. Like, and then they did it anyway. But like, I lied to me. And then it. Right. So now like, I'd be just surprised that I was this right. Right. You know, it's, it, it's fucking crazy. So, um, yes. Uh, outside of that, anything else you got? Man, this has been a hell of a month for content. Like, just the new, just San Diego. So we could just do, we could do the show just on San Diego. But everything else that's happened, all the announcements, all the man, it's just been. Whew. And we have, like, you're, are you caught up on Young Justice? You're not caught up on Young Justice either, man. Yeah, we're gonna have to come back and really the, the next month mailbag's gonna be really, really spicy because we'll have to actually live with the new news that we have. And we didn't talk about Black Widow and the confirmation of Taskmaster, the confirmation of multiple Black Widows in the movie. Oh, oh, uh, thank you for bringing that up. First of all, let me just say, um, uh. Okay, look, I don't understand Scarlett Johansson is fucking problematic, but yeah, I'll see yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll yeah, see yeah. y'all in the fucking theater. I'll see y'all all there. Oh, Trump opening night. Yeah. All right, cool, cool, cool. Nobody wanted it. Cool. All right, cool. You, you guys are going to be there. Cuz um, you know what? You know what's a bigger stretch than Black Widow? Fucking Eternals. Um, so there's that, but also just think of them fight scenes. Uh, I said I said this when we we did our, our write up. I I I think they might have gender been been Taskmaster. I think they might have. Mm, yeah. There's because a theory. We, again, I don't, I don't, I, again, it's early footage. So maybe they just had somebody who's really, really a little bit smaller and looked. Again, they have Taskmaster kind of mirroring um, uh, Black Widow's fighting style. And I just felt, I, again, I just, and to me, it was like, kind of fits with everything that else they're doing. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if they did that. And, um, so keep an eye on that. Uh, Zemo with the mask, pearl mask, and uh, I need to lost my shit. They're bringing Zemo back, you know. So I'm full Zemo, baby. Yeah, with the mask and with the purple mask and everything. We, 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 we live in a in a time, and and again, that's just the Marvel stuff. I'm, I'm talking this weekend. We we'll on the Super Tuesday Recap Podcast. I'm bringing the Star Trek crew together because we got a lot of shit to talk about on Star Trek. So. Like that deserved its own fucking like show where I get to talk with the my Star Trek Discovery people because we got a lot of Star Trek coming uh, coming to the the, the uh, content coming to the network. So, which is good because Agent of Shield is ending and man, two of our, two of our shows are ending this year, man, or maybe next year depending on when Agent of Shield airs. But Agent it's, of Shield, it's gonna, both of them, it's time. No, like, I'm right, not sad. Right. I'm not like broken up by either one of them. Oh no, 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 me either. It's like it's like hey, go out on your own. It to me, it's. To me, I'm only sad because when we started Super Tuesday, when I started Super Tuesday recap, it was pretty much Arrow and Agent of Shield. That's that, got that's me. the backbone of this shit. That was the backbone of it. So seeing them go, to me, that's where the sadness comes in. At it's not for the show. It's it's more of along the lines of oh man, like we I've been through this journey. It's been eight seasons for Arrow. It's been seven seasons for Asian of S.H.I.E.L.D. And it's crazy to fucking say that shit, you know, out loud. So that's where my sadness comes from. And that is like, oh, wow. But from a technical point of view, oh, nigga, there's two less shows we got to worry about trying to scramble to review each week. 
So, I'm kind of excited for that. So, yeah. Uh, anything else you want to say? Any other? I know we'll do that. We'll do a separate poll list because again, we're not going to be ruining Agent Shield in like a week, so uh, we'll have plenty of time. I can't. You know, we'll talk on time is time to record for Agent Shield, but it's two hours. I don't think I'm actually physically or mentally ready. Oh, absolutely not. Oh no, ready? Of course not. Nobody's ready. Nobody's ready. How does how does one become ready for that? It's like, They're coming for our hearts, aren't they? Right. It's like you know, it does. Is Sean being ever ready to die in one of the films he's 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 shooting? No, no. You just you know, you, it just comes and you're just there and you just it just happens. So you know. Um. All right, folks. There you go. That is the mailbag. They're a little bit extra long with an intruder that showed up on there. Um, <laughs> We're gonna set security up next week, baby. Hold on. I'm I'm actually see if she actually sent an email in. For those who don't know, what happened was we were in the middle of recording talking about stuff. And Shannon just pops into the, the go to meeting. We're like, was this by accident? She was like, well, I'm trying to send you a message. You want us to rant about Black Lightning? But see, here's the thing. Me and, uh, me and uh, 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 Deepom, we don't watch Black Lightning, so we don't have anything to rant about. So, Mm-mm. Mm-mm. you know, tap, you know. Love yourself more. This is the, here you go. Here's how you know we're in the golden era of nerd shit. Say no to someone. I'm saying no to Say no. Man. Opt out. I, I opted out of Titans, Batwoman. You know, I opted out of Batwoman. I opted out of um, the Transformers movies. I opted out of the X Men movies. I've opted out of DC. Inter- like I'm saving money, dude. Yeah, save money and time. I'm just saying, you can say no. It's fine. It just say like Nancy Reagan. Just say no. Just, just. Oh man, you know what? You know what? You know what? You know the name of the episode got to be now, right? That's not my fault. I'm just going to have pictures of everything we're saying no to. <laughs> just say no. To a real, real surprise. They're like, what, what is this cover? Oh, no, it's just say no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Friends, friend, hey, and remember, guys, friends don't let friends joker. Yo, I was on another podcast, the Earth 2 podcast, talking about um, Far From Home a couple weeks ago, and they were talking about the news, and I was like, hey, guys, let's just put the thing to bed. Let's all agree not to see Joker. And they thought I was kidding. And I had to, like, uh, yeah, it was bad. Hey, yo, real friends don't let friends see Joker. Just, I'm just saying. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Or, or Dark Phoenix. Yo, whoever wrote that in, that was not your friend. Not your friend at all. Not your friend at all. Don't get taken to see Dark Phoenix. You love yourself more. Love yourself. We're a love yourself podcast. Of course, not love yourself enough that Homelander's jerking off. In it. Uh, you know what? Let's just go ahead and end the show right now. You know what? Uh, see? <laughs> this is... We end, we, we, we end how we begin. Um, <laughs> thank you guys very much for listening. Uh, mailbag at mtrnetwork.net, and we will see you guys in the end of August. Thank you guys. Until next time, we're out of here. Can Peace. you hear a disapproving stare? Is that, is that coming through? Is it the same disappearing uh, approving stare as like a friend stare? Like, is it like on, on a scale from one to, one, to <laughs> one to 10, with 10 being. You know, the number of times I say I'm not watching, I haven't watched Friends to, to one being the day that I say I am going to watch it. Like, where are we at right here? Like, you're going to leave this all in, aren't you? I, uh, yeah, because I actually didn't hit the, the, the not record button. So, yeah, it's all. Goodbye. Good. Bye. <laughs>